rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who are in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her consoling breast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We come on this Laetare Sunday. I deliberately underline the word just to remind my brain. It seems that yesterday evening during the Mass, I a couple of times said Gaudete. Of course, both Advent and Lent have this sort of midpoint, as it were, where we have the rose vestment, where we pause perhaps for a moment to reflect on the journey that we've made so far this Lent, uh, to rejoice that we are coming close to the great Paschal celebration, therefore to, to renew ourselves, to have that new energy to set forth again uh, in the final weeks. As we will hear, uh, Nicodemus comes to the Lord and finds a, a new strength from his conversation with him. This morning, we come to the Lord. We begin by recognizing our need of him, recognizing our need of his strength and of his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Nick Keane. So let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. All the heads of the priesthood and the people too added infidelity to infidelity, copying all the shameful practices of the nations and defiling the temple that the Lord had consecrated for himself in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, tirelessly sent them messenger after messenger, since he wished to spare his people and his house. But they ridiculed the messengers of God. They despised his words. They laughed at his prophets. Until at last the wrath of the Lord rose so high against his people that there was no further remedy. Their enemies burned down the temple of God, demolished the walls of Jerusalem, set fire to all its palaces, and destroyed everything of value in it. The survivors were deported by Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon. They were to serve him and his sons until the kingdom of Persia came to power. This is how the word of the Lord was fulfilled that he spoke through Jeremiah. Until this land has enjoyed its Sabbath rest, until seventy years have gone by, it will keep Sabbath throughout the days of its desolation. 
and in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord that was spoken through Jeremiah, the Lord roused the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, to issue a proclamation and to have it publicly displayed throughout his kingdom. Thus speaks Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has ordered me to build him a temple in Jerusalem, in Judah. Whoever there is among you of all his people, may his God be with him. Let him go up. Responsorial Psalm I will let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat and wept, remembering Zion. On the poplars that grew there, we hung up our harps. I will let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. For it was there that they asked us, our captors, for songs, our oppressors for joy. Sing to us, they said, one of Zion's songs. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. O oh, how could we sing the song of the Lord on alien soil? If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. If I prize not Jerusalem above all my joys. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. God loved us with so much love that he was generous with his mercy. When we were dead through our sins, he brought us to life with Christ. It is through grace that you have been saved and raised us up with him and gave us a place with him in heaven, in Christ Jesus. This was to show for all ages to come through his goodness towards us in Christ Jesus, how infinitely rich he is in grace. Because it is by his grace that you have been saved, through faith, not by anything of your own, but by a gift from God, not by anything you have done, so that nobody can claim the credit. We are God's work of art, created in Christ Jesus to live the good life, as from the beginning he had meant us to live it. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, and everyone who believes in him has eternal life. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, the Son of Man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world but that so through him the world might be saved. 
No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. On these grounds is sentence pronounced, that though the light has come into the world, men have shown they prefer darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everybody who does wrong hates the light and avoids it, for fear his actions should be exposed. But the man who lives by truth comes out into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what he does is done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Should be careful with my actions this morning. There is a, a previous homily I gave on YouTube where the freeze frame has caught me with my arms stuck in the air as if uh, I want to ask a question. What I was illustrating at the time was a group of children I was talking to, one of whom had put their hand up in answer. I was going to begin by reflecting on a similar conversation. It was on this Sunday, a couple of years ago, that I was asking the children why they thought it was that the priest was in the rose vestments. And one very confidently put their hand up and said, because it's Mother's Day and my mum likes pink. I'll leave aside the stereotyping. Um, but it's no accident, of course, that it's Mother's Day. People may not have noticed in society in general that the date of Mother's Day changes each year because it follows this Laetare Sunday. It's rooted in this Laetare Sunday. It was the tradition on this day that you would go back to your hometown, your home village, your mother church, and you would go and find the font. While you were in the town, of course, it was natural that you would also go and visit your family, you'd be there with your mother, uh, practice the tradition of taking a simnel cake, etc., all built up. But the original purpose of the journey was that mother church, that finding the font, being reminded about our baptism. I'd preached on it, in fact, a number of years, uh, that people might want to do this again, not this year, but in a normal year, might want to go back to their mother church, to the font, just to remind ourselves uh, of how that journey of faith began. And I recognized that you should practice what you preach, so I resolved that I would go back uh, to the place where I was baptized, about an hour and a half's journey from where I was in a parish at the time, and I would go and see the font, which I'd built up a picture in my mind, would be some wonderful carved stone, Victorian, whatever it was, uh, stood there proudly uh, near the door of the church, if it was an early church, maybe in a baptistry of its own, whatever it might be. I arrived to discover that the church had been reordered, and it was something uh, of a stainless steel bowl which was there, I have to say, in some ways, it was a disappointment. But nonetheless, it served its purpose. Because I had spent some of that time journeying there and journeying back, reflecting on my baptism, wondering who was there, um, wondering whether or not I slept or cried, and, and how it all began. If we can't go back this day to a mother church, then perhaps at least uh, we could talk uh, to parents or godparents. Godparents, of course, meant to have that ongoing relationship with us. Uh, talk to them uh, about uh, the, uh, the day of our baptism, the moment of that pouring of water, the giving of the candle, the rich symbols that go with it. If we're a godparent, I'm godparent to a number of children, and to my shame, I haven't kept in touch as I should have done over the years. Maybe this is a day to be in contact with some of them, just to keep that memory alive, to keep that sense, not that I was baptized, that I am baptized. And therefore, to rekindle uh, the excitement, as it were, that we have on this Leitari Sunday as we start to look uh, 
to the moment when we will renew our baptismal promises alongside those uh, for whom the origin of Lent, of course, is that time of preparation as they are baptized and brought uh, into the church uh, alongside us. We might reflect on those various texts. You might want to Google the baptismal texts. They are wonderful. The way in which they speak of this life, this pilgrimage, this journey, being a preparation for that moment when uh, we, please God, uh, will meet him and be welcomed into that kingdom with the community of saints uh, who've gone before us. And they hold out to us a call as to how, therefore, we should live our lives. It would be wonderful to think that we might live them like Moses, to stand at the head of the people, our arms raised, holding up that serpent to give them the confidence uh, that sin, the serpent, can be um, overcome, that foreshadowing of Christ himself on the cross. Moses, without realizing it, associating himself with the cross and revealing uh, the strength of his faith to the people. Truth, I probably live my life more like Nicodemus. Nicodemus, I find a, a wonderful character, particularly for this Lenten journey. I love the way in which John, who throughout his gospel, um, uh, is fascinated by the image of light and the language of light, talks about Nicodemus coming at night. He is snuck along there. He has a position in society, member of the council. He's clearly very nervous about people knowing that he is interested in the Lord, that he wants to know more about him, but he can't resist coming to ask. So he comes at night. And that wonderful play on words as the Lord talks to him about having a confidence uh, about uh, who we are, about faith, about our convictions. Where he says to him, the man who lives by truth comes out into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what he does is done in God. Nicodemus will grow in confidence. We will hear him uh, uh, soon uh, as part of that council, stepping out slightly and saying to them, don't you think uh, he should be heard? Don't you think he should at least be listened to? Clearly what was said that night has had an impact. He's been reflecting on it on his own journey. It's given him that bit more confidence to stand in front of them and at least ask for a fair hearing. But he has snapped down and steps back into the shadows. It is there that he stays until we will hear him at the foot of the cross, associating himself with the burial of the body a very public act, something normally kept to, to the family, or at least a very close circle of friends. This is uh, quite an intimate moment uh, in almost every sense of the word. It's a powerful witness as he finds himself, like Moses, stood near the cross uh, and witnessing to his relationship with the Lord. It's a journey that we're invited to undertake uh, this Lent. It's not always easy. It's there in the psalm. By the waters they sat and, and weren't able to sing that song of joy that their captors wanted because this was uh, an alien place of foreign land. It was a struggle for them. But we're invited to overcome that struggle. This Laetare Sunday, we're invited to renew ourselves for the next part of the journey. We pray that like Nicodemus, we may come into the light. That by that light at Easter, we will be ready and able to confidently renew our baptismal promises. St. Paul uh, says in that second reading, We are God's work of art created in Christ Jesus to live the good life as from the beginning he has meant us to live it. Let us prepare to come into the light.
I'm saying preparation for our renewal of our baptismal promises, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the solemnity of Easter approaches, dear friends, let us pray to the Lord to be, more, to be the more insistent that all of us and the whole multitude of the baptized together with the entire world may come to share more abundantly in this sacred ministry. That God may be pleased to increase faith and understanding in the catechumens who are to be initiated by holy baptism in the coming Paschal Solemnity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, that peoples in need may find help and that peace and security may be firmly established everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, that all who are afflicted or suffering temptation may be strengthened by his grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, that all of us may learn to distribute the fruits of self-denial for the good of those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have gone before us, called to the kingdom of heaven, that we may follow in their footsteps and be united with them in the heavenly host. Lord, in your mercy. And we ask Mary, who stood by the cross, to join her prayers with ours as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Have mercy, O Lord, on the prayers of your church and turn with compassion to the hearts that bow before you, that those who make sharers in the divine ministry, mystery may never be left without your assistance through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Pius, St. Edward, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who enlightens everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Thank you for being part of the prayer this morning. Thank you to the IT team, I think Nick this morning, uh, for providing uh, the, the ability for, for us to, to be able to be together in this way. Thank you to the CYF team who provided another uh, video resource on the website uh, for children's liturgy. Do please encourage children and grandchildren uh, to go there. Reminder, this evening at 6.30 is sung evening prayer. Uh, we've bubbled with Father Jonathan Howe parish priest to Godalming, uh, who, who's on his own there, um, so he is able to come and join us, and we can sing evening, well, I say we can sing, he has a great voice, Father Thomas has a great voice, Father Roy has a great voice, so the three of them sing, and I sort of lip sync in the background, uh, staying slightly in the shadows like a Nicodemus, uh, but because of uh, uh, the singing skills required. And it will be sung evening prayer, then an opportunity to, to pray for any intercessions or prayers you may have. Do please uh, send them in, office at cpg.church. And then every evening this week, um, there is an opportunity to continue our journey together. In addition to the daily masses and evening prayer uh, on Monday, um, there, I'm just trying to remember what it is on Monday. Uh, oh yes, of course, uh, it's the Rosary at 7, Tuesday, uh, Adoration, Wednesday, Lexio Divina, Thursday, the Bishop's Invited Course, uh, Friday, um, Stations uh, of the Cross. Finally, um, I'm now going to prepare to walk back to the house uh, next door. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Father Thomas... Uh, is walking to St. Pius for Mass, and Father Roy is walking to St. Edward's and then on to St. Mary's, all part of building up our footsteps. Thank you for your support of that. Um,
because there's been such a support, we decided to increase uh, the challenge uh, to ourselves. Uh, our target is now to, to walk uh, a million footsteps uh, this Lent. I love one of the comments by someone who's generously donated, pointing out that uh, by the time we finished, we could have walked to Scarborough. I don't know if that was an invitation or a wish that by Easter we would be in Scarborough, uh, but thank you for, for the donation that went with it, and thank you for all uh, who have supported it. Uh, it's becoming clear that by the end of Lent, we'll probably have supported 14 communities uh, in, in getting water in their community and therefore uh, enabling them uh, to, to live a, a fuller, fuller life. I say we, I mean you. Thank you indeed for making it possible. Uh, we are very grateful for your support. Finally, uh, on this Leitare Sunday, uh, this Mothering Sunday, I uh, wish a holy and blessed day uh, to all mothers. I hope uh, uh, you will have breakfast brought to you in bed, lunch cooked, um, whatever else. I hope it's a real day of celebration, opportunity to us to thank you uh, for the great love that you share often the great faith that you've shared from that moment of our baptism. So the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.